lives. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred tonight. We're going to be talking about being spiritually minded. So. That's good. I, I'm excited about the, the message tonight. It's be spiritually minded. Um, you know, there are different alternatives. We can be carnally minded or spiritually minded. But uh, being carnally minded is death, a destruction. It's a it's going to lead us a place we don't want to go. But on the other hand, being spiritually minded is life and peace. That's what uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 6 says. And so we want to think about spiritually minded. Now, if we are spiritually minded, we should be able to measure it. So tonight is not so much uh, how to become spiritually minded. It's about how do we operate if we are spiritually minded what do we do if we are spiritually minded uh, we all can be spiritually minded but there's a lot of people that are not spiritually minded and the consequences are very significant mm. to be carnally minded is death yes but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so uh, uh, going to a church service uh, when you think about that, or being involved in church activities, uh, religious activities, uh, there are a lot of sinners that are participate in uh, church activities and uh, religious activities, and there are a lot of carnal uh, mm -hmm. Christians. Now, the Christians, uh, what, do, what does that mean, carnal Christian? Um, well, that means that they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they've not renewed their mind. Their Amen. mind Amen. is not on things above. And it says uh, it's only when we have are spiritually minded that we have life and peace. So if there are sinners and carnal Christians going to church services and participating in uh, religious activities, then... Uh, it, just going to a church service uh, every week does not make you spiritually minded. Oh, and, and that's important for us to understand. So a lot of people just operate and do what they do during the week. And then on Sunday morning, they, they go and appear in a, a, some kind of a religious service and think that that's all okay, that they're okay because they have uh, attended a service. But there's a big difference between being carnally minded and spiritually minded. A uh, carnally minded. So let's think about that for a minute. Uh, it says if you live according to the flesh, uh, then then that's that's going to lead a place you don't want to go. And so what do I mean by flesh and what do I mean by carnally minded? Well, I'm not talking about the body here. I'm not talking about something you mm -hmm. can't touch. The, the carnal mind is is a Christian, uh, but their thoughts and their desires and their affections are still on the things of the world. Right. Uh, it's that flesh is called the the fallen nature of humanity that we receive uh, from uh, our ancestor Adam when he fell uh, and and disobeyed and sinned in the Garden of Eden. Then there came uh, this carnal nature, uh, sin nature on all of, of mankind. And it was only through the redemption of Jesus Christ by his death and sacrifice on the cross uh, that he redeemed us from that. So we can be born again, but being spiritually minded, spiritually minded, uh, we have to renew our mind. Uh, and, and so that's what we want to talk about tonight. How do we measure whether we are spiritually minded or not? And I'm going to give you some very practical guidelines, very practical guidelines on how to know that you're spiritually minded. And like I said, just going to services uh, is not the uh, standard uh, to know that you're in spiritually minded. Um, and, and I want to give this example, personal example. Uh, years ago, uh, we have been in different congregations, and Sherry and I have really been in congregations, uh, different congregations where we've moved from city to city. 
uh, different congregations all of our life. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a time we were, and we've always been very involved and very mm -hmm. active. Very active. But there was a time that uh, we we were very involved. We were, we taught the youth. We taught the adults in the, the congregation we were in, and uh, they had all kinds of special programs. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Easter programs and Christmas programs and we were very involved my whole family was involved Sherry was uh, involved in the choir uh, my children were involved in the programs and I was the moderator of those but after an Easter and, and it, it had a very large attendance people from other congregations mm -hmm. would come and so we we would do those programs uh, night after night uh, Almost all, week, nights, yeah. almost all week, uh, uh, and so it was well attended, lots of people, but then there was a time, and then particularly after an Easter uh, service, uh, that uh, there's something rose up on the inside of me, it was the Holy Spirit leading me and guiding me, and it said, this is not real, this is not real, and I want the real, and it was very religious, and it seemed to have all of the trappings of religion. And uh, like I said, it would attract uh, hundreds of people to the program. And, and we were very involved in it, but it was not real. And uh, sure, it looks real. I mean, in the Christmas programs, we had uh, uh, camels, we had... Uh, uh, sheep, mm -hmm. we had shepherds, we had, we had the angel coming down. We had everything, but it was not real. It was not the real Holy Spirit. It, it was, it looked good and, and, it, and it felt good until the Holy Spirit rose up in me and said, I had to seek the real. The real. And, and so we, we left that congregation and it took us a while to find, but we found the real. And, and uh, and that's what, what we're doing. And, and you might say, well, this, this uh, Zoom meeting, this, this is not real. Yes, it is, because the Holy Spirit is here. The power of the Holy Spirit is here. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is here. This is real. And, and you might say, well, uh, this is just a play thing. And what really matters is when we go uh, to our church congregation. But I want to tell you, we need to be spiritually minded. And it's not about going to services. It's about our relationship with the Holy Spirit and uh, and our thinking, what we're thinking about day by day. Now, a spiritually minded person. Oh, I have a scripture. Okay. It says as <laughs> it says as a as a person thinketh, so so is it. So our thinking is critical. And what we think about is critical. Okay, so I started with Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, and, and it's really a passage 5 through uh, 10, but it says if you live according to the flesh, and that's that fallen human nature, then, then you're going to die. But if you're spiritually minded, uh, you will have life and peace. and peace and it said also that the carnal mind uh is hostile to god Woo! that that's the mind we had that thinks like the world that 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 considers uh, what the world is thinking and says oh that's okay you can do this or you can do that it, mm -hmm. it's worldly thinking it's the fallen nature of man the way uh the, the fallen nature of man thinks uh but the mind, see, is your affections and your uh, emotions and, and your desires, what, what, what you have. And are those focused on the things above? It says that the carnal mind is hostile to God and cannot, listen to me, mm -hmm. cannot obey God. Mm -hmm. It's not just that, oh, I don't want to obey you, but the carnal mind cannot obey God. It takes the uh, the spiritual mind to to obey God, and, and and we have to renew our mind. And it's easy for us to say, "Well, yeah, I've got my re mind renewed." But uh, it's important for us to think about what happens if you have a renewed mind. And th there are two real important things. One is you're going to glorify God. Amen. Amen. You're going to glorify God, and you're going to bless people. Yes, you're going to bless you're, others. You're going to Amen. bless other people. 
and, and so that that's not just uh, uh, on Easter or it's not just on Christmas. It, it it's mm-hmm. an everyday process that mm-hmm, you're going to be mm-hmm. glorifying God. And that's if you have a spiritual mind, you're going to want to do those two things ongoing process. Uh, it's not just a, an annual event, but it's an ongoing process. If you have a spiritual mind, you will want to be you will want to glorify God and bless people. And then you want to be strategic, strategic in who you communicate with and strategic Mm. what you say. Uh, Okay, so those are very important things for us to take away from this message is that we need to be thinking. Our mind set needs to be thinking Mm -hmm. uh, about glorifying God. What can I do glorifying God? And, And I said, who is it that we're going to engage? Okay, so when you get up in the morning, you, you might think about, well, who am I going to call today? Uh, what am I going? Who am I going to speak to? Lord, where do you want me to go? Ask him mm-hmm. who to speak to, who, where to go, because he may want to send you to a store, and and he may have a person there that he will show you that that is in a difficult situation, and, and he's sending you there uh, to to communicate with that person, or it may be a friend or a relative, even in a different country, ask the Lord who to pray, who to speak to, who to pray for, and and he will show you, and so this is getting your mind, and showing your mind is on things above, and so spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, that's a very significant uh, verse. It's a fact. It's a fact. It doesn't say you have to do anything. There are basically two uh, alternatives. And one is to have a carnal mind. That's the mind that's not renewed, that doesn't think on God. It doesn't mean that you're not, you have memorized verses and you don't know verses. It doesn't mean that. It's who you're thinking about, what your affections are. Okay. Uh, spiritually minded, you're going to be thinking about the Lord. How can I glorify the Lord? Or who can I call? Uh, who, who can, can I, I bless interact today? with? Who can I? Who can I have an impact on? Because to be spiritually minded, you're going to have a spiritual impact. To be spiritually minded, you will have a spiritual impact. To be carnally minded, you're going to go about doing your own thing and then show up on a a service someplace and sometime. But be spiritually minded, you're going to be strategic. Who can I talk to? Who Who can I share with? Uh, what what do I need to do? But that verse, Romans 8, 6, is a fact that spiritually minded people have life and peace. But carnally minded pe- people are headed for destruction and, and, and even death. Okay, but I said that's just a fact. That That's this. It's very significant. It's a very weighty fact, but it's not a commandment yet. But when we go to Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 1, if you be risen with Christ, seek mm-hmm. those things Thanks. which are, are above, above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. This mm-hmm. is a commandment. All of a sudden, we move from a fact that carnally minded people are going to be destroyed, spiritually minded people have life and peace. peace. But now we've moved over to Colossians chapter uh, three and, and it's a commandment mm-hmm. set your affections Factions. set your mind things on above. things above where christ is it, it's no yeah. longer optional <laughs> it's a commandment and that's not optional uh, we know that there are weighty consequences of what we do with our mind what we think about each day i think sherry had something well i just wanted to say that this is the season where the holy spirit is invading the marketplace He's invading the, the workplace, uh, pl- uh, places where you might be employed, uh, are going to be employed. Uh, he is entering into uh, that uh, arena uh, even stronger uh, than he has been before. And so this, this message tonight is just getting us all prepared uh, to, to walk in what the Holy Spirit is doing in the earth today, not only in the body of Christ, but in uh, the the workplace today, in the marketplace today. So so this is about how do you think all day? What are you thinking about? 
Uh, are you just thinking about your problems and your issues and doing your job and doing what's required of you? Or are you thinking on things above? See, I mean, it's not I mean, an option. It's a commandment. Seek those things, things which, which are, are above. above. Where Christ sits at the yes. right hand of the of God. Help us, Lord. And set your affections. Now, that when you set your affections or set your mind on, on these things, that's your desires. That's your affections. Mm -hmm. that, oh, oh, that's what you want. That's what you want. It's not at the end of the day. See, you, you, you've desired all of these other things during the day. And then at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, you're, you're going to uh, change uh, what you're thinking about. No, it's not about that. It's exactly. about being spiritually minded. And it's what your affections are on. It's what you're, what you're desiring, what, what you want. Uh, and it's an important part of your life. It's not just an afterthought. Right. It is an important thing. It's a critical thing. We've got to have our mind. And we know that we're spiritually minded if we're concerned about glorifying God and, and blessing, blessing other others. people. Now, this is kind of the introduction to it. And I want to move specifically to some activities, to some activities that we will know that we are spiritually minded. And I want to move to testimonies uh, because in the body of Christ, there's such a misconception of what a testimony, a spiritual testimony really is. And, and it really hit me in the face this past uh, yeah, Saturday. Saturday because Sherry and I were ministering with an international group and, and uh, I taught and we ministered to them. And then the host, uh, the minister who was hosting the event, uh, said, okay, who has a testimony? And first there was somebody that just jumped up and, and said, I have a testimony. And, and she went for 15 minutes. And if she ever mentioned God in it, I don't know. It was all about her uh, ordeal and her, yeah, her, problem. her problem and her traumatic event. And that is not a testimony. And so I really want to talk uh, in the remaining part of this message about what is a testimony. And your personal story is not a testimony. It's not a testimony. It's not a spiritual testimony. As a matter of fact, it's unprofitable. What is profitable is when you glorify God. That's right. When you glorify God and your thoughts are on glorifying God and telling people and sharing with people what he has accomplished in your life. That is a testimony. And how he has made you to overcome. And, and so you do this by his word and by his spirit. What has his spirit mm -hmm. spoken to you? A personal story about all of the junk that you've gone through is unprofitable. It's unprofitable to you to rehearse all of that. It's unprofitable to the people you're telling it to. But if you're telling them about what Jesus has done in your Hallelujah. life, what he has accomplished in your life, that is profitable for the kingdom. Amen. A spiritual testimony will have spiritual impact, impact, but a natural testimony, a natural story about some ordeal that you've gone through, it will not help people. That's right. It, see, but, but, but you're wanting to help people. That's what a spiritual mind is about. So if you have a spiritual mind, then you need to be thinking about a testimony that will help people. It has to be a spiritual testimony. It's not just some 15 minute talking about some uh, terrible uh, thing that you've gone through, your personal story. It's about something Jesus has done. And so what I want you to mm -hmm. think about it is just a one minute testimony mm -hmm. about what Jesus has accomplished in your life. And that's what we're going to be talking about, the testimony. And, and, and just a personal story of, about uh, some bad uh, thing, event that you went through, forget it. It's not a testimony like the Bible talks about. It's not a spiritual testimony. It's all, a spiritual testimony is all about what God is accomplishing. Oh, this, let me tell you what God has accomplished. That's in right. I, he gave me this verse. And so you're, you're doing it by the word of God. You're relating it to the word of God. And you're relating, relating it to the spirit, what the spirit has done. Uh, see that woman 
uh, who talked for 15 minutes, even though she was instructed to give a testimony for, for one minute. minute. She talked for 15 minutes, and if she ever mentioned God I, or Jesus or anything like that, I don't know. But it was a terrible <laughs> story that she had. See, people do not, and Christians do not know what a testimony is. A testimony is how you have overcome a test yes. by the Word of God, God and by the Spirit, Spirit of God. God. That is a testimony, a spiritual testimony. Uh, it's not your story about all of the bad things that have happened in your life, about how uh, bad you've been. It's about Jesus. A testimony is about Jesus. It's the prophecy of Jesus. Amen. It's the spirit Amen. of prophecy. It's all about Jesus, what he has done in your life, what he has accomplished in your life. That's what a spiritual testimony is about. Now, having a spiritual testimony makes you an overcomer. Makes you an overcomer. It, does, it doesn't have to be 15 minutes talking about all the junk that you walked <laughs> through. It's about Jesus. Amen. And it, you can say it in a minute. And so I want to, I would like to encourage you to practice one minute testimonies. Start working them in your conversations. Start telling people about what Jesus has done. And if you have a conversation with somebody, you ought to make it spiritual. You ought to have a spiritual impact. You, that's a spiritually minded person is going to want to have a spiritual impact, wants to bless people. And, and so you, you pull somebody, a friend aside and say, well, I've got something I want to tell you. I want to tell you about all the junk I've been through this week. <laughs> Hey, that's not a testimony. That's not going to be profitable to them. It's going to be just uh, burdening them down. The only thing that's going to have an impact and lift them up, lift your friend up. You say, well, let me tell you about what Jesus has done in my life. Amen, this week. amen. Let me tell you uh, how Jesus has gotten me through a test. Hallelujah. How his word has worked and it's been faithful and how the spirit of God has has given me a way of escape out of a situation. It's Amen. about Jesus and about what he has accomplished in your life. Hallelujah. Woo! That this See, this is an application. How can you be spiritually minded? You be thinking about how you can glorify God and how you can help other people. See, if you tell a personal story about all the junk that you've gone through and how mean and uh, nasty things that you've done, that's not glorifying God. You've got to either decide to uh, be focused on God or be focused on you. Yeah. Be fo being focused on you is not going to glorify God. Now, telling some old um, story about how uh, mean and uh, we've been and how difficult our life has been. And how the devil's been on your back all week. That is not going to glorify God. And it's not going to be profitable to anybody. It will not be profitable to you. And it will not be profitable to the people you tell it to. Matter of fact, it, they might be happy and uh, easy going before you tell them some old sad story. And then that might <laughs> burden them down. What you need to do is be practicing on one minute uh, testimonies about what Jesus has done in your life and be ready to give it, uh, to be able to give an answer. And when they, when your friends talk about, oh, they've got these problems, you give them the answer. The answer is Jesus. Jesus. The answer is not your uh, baggage. The answer is Jesus in every case. Yes, yes, and it's yes. by the word of God and by the spirit of God. I want you to be spiritually minded. So when you are, wake up in the morning, you you be thinking, uh, who can I call? Who can I tell what Jesus has done in my life? How can I how can I benefit people? How can I bless people? Because your testimony is supposed to be a blessing. And let me tell you, telling uh, people about your old junk and, and the things done in the darkness, that is not going to bless them. What's going to bless them is a testimony that lifts up Jesus Christ and tells uh, tells people what Jesus has accomplished in your life. Hallelujah. Now, I want to go even a step beyond that. You don't have to be just focused on the things that he, Jesus has done in your life. You can rehearse a, a testimony that somebody else has gone through. 
And, and, and they, if they're dealing with a difficult situation, you could say, oh, let me tell you, I've got a friend who, who went through the same situation. And let me tell you what Jesus did in their life. You can take somebody else's testimony and make you an overcomer because you work it in at the right moment. You tell the testimony at the right moment what they need. For example, mm -hmm. Joy gave, uh, was talking to somebody who had a relative who had cancer, and she gave Sherry's testimony. That makes Joy an uh, overcomer because of her testimony. Hallelujah. You know, that's what Revelation 12, 11 said. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. testimony. So Joy didn't go through it, but because she shared it, it made her an overcomer. It benefited Joy. It benefited the person she told it to. So you don't have to just go with what Jesus has done in your life. Say, I know a testimony of somebody who went through this situation, Jesus delivered them. This is the verse uh, that uh, he shared with the person to deliver them. This is what the Holy Spirit did in their life. So you can share somebody else's testimony until you have your own testimony. You better work on other people's testimony. Start sharing them. Share what uh, uh, what Sherry and I have shared with you. We tell testimonies. We, we share testimonies about what God has accomplished in our life. We've told you lots of testimonies uh, during the time we've been together in these sessions. And, and so you're free to use any of them. When, when you uh, interact with a person that is uh, uh, downtrodden and uh, uh, cast down. Uh, Sick or diseased. You think about what testimony they need to hear about what God has done, what Jesus has accomplished. And it might not be your life to begin with. But I tell you, you focus on giving testimonies, spiritual testimonies. You will have spiritual impact and, yeah. and you will have spiritual experiences and that will make you an overcomer. Doesn't have to be with what you've done. It's what Jesus has done. You can share those testimonies. It makes you an overcomer and pretty soon you're going to have your own testimonies. Start working on one minute testimonies about what Jesus has accomplished. Let Tell people what he's accomplished in your life. Tell if you don't have any other examples, tell what what uh, the Lord has done in Sherry's life. She's raised uh, several people from the dead, uh, healed uh, um, multitudes of people, uh, saved, uh, uh, led them in salvation, yeah. uh, multitudes and multitudes of people. Tell testimonies of somebody about what Jesus is doing today. Don't just re relate it all to uh, 10,000 years ago. What is Jesus doing, doing today? today. Uh, work on testimonies. Be, see, you're strategic. A person who is spiritually minded is strategic, and they're going to want to work in testimonies because testimonies glorify God and uh, benefit you and other people. But uh, telling an old story or telling a joke is not going to help anybody. And so a spiritually minded person is going to use testimonies because it's what they do. They glorify God. And that's what a spiritually person does. A spiritual person glorifies God and helps other people. And that's what a testimony does. It glorifies God and helps other people. And it helps you too and makes you an overcomer. Uh, glory to God. It, you're not the same. If you yeah. start sharing testimonies, spiritual testimonies, you'll have spiritual impact and you will not be the same. You will be benefited because you will be an overcomer. And where you couldn't overcome before, now you'll be able to overcome because you've got the tools. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I'm uh, talking about tonight. Uh, tools uh, to help you be an overcomer and be spiritually minded and, and how to give people an answer when they are in a desperate situation. How to give them life and peace. Yes. See, the testimony is going to give them life and peace. And, and you can run up a, against a, people who are in very difficult yeah. situations and you will have the answer to help them. And, and this is only one way. I'm, there are other ways, but 
Tonight, we're focusing on testimonies, how to implement the fact that you are spiritually minded. What can you do about it when you interact with somebody? Uh, and if the Lord sends you somewhere, uh, that you'll know what, you'll have something to share. Begin to work on these uh, testimonies. Begin thinking about them. Uh, you might even make some notes about things. And then when you're talking with people, you'll have some tools to interact with them to set them free. To, to set bring, the captives free. Set the captives free. That's the reason Jesus came. That's the reason you are here is to, to set, set the, the captives, captives free. free. Your testimonies will set the captives free. So you, you've, you've encountered enough testimonies. Uh, that you can tell people and share uh, with people to set them free. It's not about leaving people in the situation they are. It, it's about be strategic. You want to glorify God and, and you want to help other people. And how can you do it? One way is through spiritual testimonies. Hallelujah. And I hope I've made it clear today that talking 15 minutes and telling about the, the garbage <laughs> that you've gone through uh, is not is unprofitable. Mm -hmm. And even after uh, talking for 15 minutes uh, and telling about all the garbage you've gone through, and, and then you say, but praise the Lord. And you yep. try to put a little hook in it. At yeah, the end, a little twist at the end. And, and, and think that's a testimony. Let me tell you, that's not Woo! a testimony. <laughs> it's unprofitable. Uh, don't don't think oh but i said praise the lord don't for forget it because what the only thing that's going to be profitable is when you, when you tell, said praise the lord when you <laughs> when you tell what jesus accomplished that's what's going to set the captives free uh the junk of our life well we've all gone through junk and so it's easy for me to speak about it because i've gone through junk yeah and if i shared all my junk with you it would weight you down well, but all, the only message I have for you is about what Jesus has accomplished That's in right. my life. Amen. And I could talk all, on and on about that and never tell about all the dark things and all the heavy things that I've been through. It's nothing about that. It's about Jesus and what he's accomplished in my life. And some other people, uh, they, they think this uh, this is a testimony. If you, you talk for 15 minutes and tell all the bad uh, things that uh, you've gone through that uh, has happened to you in your life. And then, then at the end you say, but I believe Jesus will heal me one day, or I believe Jesus will deliver my children one day. That, that is uh, lukewarm. And Jesus is going to spit you out yeah, of his, his mouth. mouth. You better be watchful about what you do, mm -hmm. because if you if you want to be spiritually minded, you've got to evidence. You've got to have some evidence uh, that you're spiritually minded. You, you've got to be glorifying God and helping other people. It's not, you're not on this earth just about you and for you, for yourself. See, a person who's spiritually minded is going to be focused on God and focused on how to help other people. And, and I hope Hallelujah. this message Hallelujah. has helped you. Uh, it's helped me. And I, I don't want to be carnally minded. I don't want to have the nature of a fallen humanity. I want to have the nature of Jesus Christ. Christ amen. Right, amen. Well, it says that he has given us his divine nature. He's given us a testimony. And in that is that's the word of God. And, and how the word of God has affected our lives. And I know the word of God has affected my life. It's affected my 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 life in in giving me um the miracle uh, that he gave me in my body from from terminal cancer uh the cancer you know was there but jesus took it away hallelujah that's a testimony right there less than a minute uh and and that will that will that will share with other people uh and make them profitable and that's what we want we want to that's what blessing really means it means to profit. And George can understand that. He's an economist. It, 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 you know, to, to profit. You know, that's what a blessing is. It means to profit someone. And, uh, and that's, that's what we want. And um, I give this testimony. Um, and this is about finances. Uh, I was in a session 
and um, the Lord uh, spoke to me by the Holy Spirit and said, uh, speak uh, that this person over here, this woman over here uh, is going to receive a thousand dollars from the Lord. Well, I just, I just sat there. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to do with that. And, and then the, the Lord spoke to me and he said, speak the money into the fish's mouth. And I said, okay, Jesus did that. Jesus spoke the money for the taxes for, for himself and for Peter. He spoke that into the fish's mouth. And so I did, I stood up and I said, this woman right here, and I pointed her out, is going to receive a thousand dollars from the Lord. And I sat back down. I said, okay, Lord, that's what I, that's what I, that's what you told me to say. And that's what I said. Hallelujah. It says that we shall do what Jesus did and even greater things shall we do because of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know this is the testimony that a woman walked up to me after the session was over with and handed me a check for a thousand dollars for this woman. She had the, the name of the woman written out on the check and she said, I don't want her to know who gave this. So I'm giving it to you and I want you to give it to her. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And so there we have it. A thousand dollars, and and I give the testimony to the Lord that He can release finances to you uh, in the name of Jesus. And any of you who need finances right now uh, to pay a bill, to uh, to pay your taxes, to uh, whatever you need uh, financially from the Lord, I release it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus you will have a testimony. Hallelujah. You will have a testimony about how Jesus increased your finances, how Jesus paid your taxes, how Jesus paid, paid uh, your mortgage, how Jesus paid your schooling, how Jesus paid uh, whatever you need him to pay. He's Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want our testimonies to, to glorify God and we want them to bless other people or profit other people 